The idea of the wind chill factor began in the prairies. Environment Canada started using it in 1975. It's supposed to tell us how cold the combination of low temperatures and wind makes us feel. But now the Weather Service is measuring the wind chill factor in a new and complicated way, in watts per square meter. Terry Matty explains. Weathermen used to issue wind chill temperatures, saying, for example, that a certain speed wind and a minus 10 degree temperature would make it feel like minus 20. Well, that was found to be confusing, so the wind chill factor was introduced. It combines wind speed and temperature to measure how fast an object cools. The measurement is in watts per square meter. Remembering that isn't important. You might want to remember, though, that a wind chill factor between 1,200 and 1,600 means you will be cold. Between 1,600 and 2,300, there's a danger of frostbite. Over 2,300 can be dangerous, and at 2,700, exposed skin probably will freeze in less than half a minute. The wind chill is a much more meaningful value. Uh, it is, the only, is a much more rational way of combining the cooling effects, chilling effects of both low temperature and wind together. Equivalent temperature really doesn't do that so that the wind chill number is uh, far more meaningful if you're looking at how fast will an object cool, how fast will flesh freeze when exposed to cold wind and temperature. Here's a helpful hint. You too can calculate your own wind chill factor. All you do is multiply 1.1626 times 3 minus t times 10.45 plus 10 times the square root of v minus v. Of course, you might find it easier to check the weather forecast, and if the wind chill factor is above 2300, staying outdoors can be dangerous to your health. Terry Matty, CBC News, Winnipeg.